the uh, the next piece of advanced content uh, that I want to share just with you is um, responses to this question from the Week Signal survey. Uh, what is a conversation your sector is not having enough? And I say that this is advanced content because it, it's not, you know, this isn't habits. These aren't sort of general tips and tips for life. This is, this is insight into, you know, people who are trying to change the conversation or lead the conversation in their own sector of work. You know, what is the paradigm that they are struggling in that they're trying to shift? And, and so it may not be directly applicable but I think having a tour, having an overview of the different, yeah, sort of paradigm shifts that different sectors are struggling with um, does help to give just a rich understanding of, of the challenges that are unfolding across society. And just a kind of just in excitement about how much, how much um, cognitive work uh, exciting cognitive work there is in front of us all. Um, you know, really fundamental questions in every sector um, that need to be grappled with. So let me throw a few of them out at you. Uh, public relations, you can't see it, it's behind my screen here. But the question is, is impartiality dead? Because in, in, in public relations and, you know, in, in media in general, there is this this kind of almost like postmodern doubt about whether it's possible to be objective, whether it's possible to be impartial. And if it's not, then what stance do we take that can serve a broad public? In medicine, how do we restore trust in health and science institutions? You know, clearly that's a question that is grappling with the lingering effects of COVID of the pandemic where, you know, uh, medicine and science in many societies had to be put up on a pillar uh, very quickly to say what is. And then obviously over time as we learn things and understand that that immediate advice was uh, perhaps not um, the, the advice that we needed, but it was the best that was available. And, and many people in society do not have a kind of sophisticated understanding of the way that science works, uh, the way that medical understanding evolves. And so they, they judge the whole institution harshly against its first sort of initial diagnosis. Um, and yet we need to trust these processes of knowledge creation. Uh, so how do we restore that fundamental trust? In human relations, I thought this was very interesting. You know, someone saying, you know, the conversation is that we train on these things, but we do not meaningfully talk about racism and sexism at work. And I wonder if that resonates with you. So, you know, a very new geo question. How, how do we create the space where we can meaningfully talk um, about topics and not just not just sort of manage the risk <laughs> of difficult topics? By, by putting them into, um, into administrative boxes. Banking, you know, asking the question, why is decentralized finance better? Which, you know, the question, the context for that question is the advent of cryptocurrencies and, um, and all of the related technologies to that, uh, this kind of classic thing we do in society where the new technology must be the better one. Um, and if you work in the banking industry, it's interesting that, you know, some people are trying to say, well, wait a minute, you need to make that case for us. Um, either because we're conservative and we don't agree or because we see that this is the way that we're going <laughs> and we don't know why. <laughs> um, in academic research, how do we cite other ways of knowing, um, you know, referring to a recognition there that you know, indigenous ways of knowing, for example, um, create useful knowledge that from kind of a scientific process is, is, is not supposed to be um, regarded on par as the peer reviewed literature. Um, 
purely because it doesn't come through the process by which that work is validated. And we need to move beyond that um, because so much of what is known or what is real in society um, doesn't go through that, pure, that peer review process. Can the academy get out of its own stovepipe and, and work with that messy, that messier sense of what is dependable knowledge? Education, you know, having a very similar uh, conversation to the banking sector, ironically, where, you know, we're constantly being asked to presume that the new methods are better. Um, it's very difficult to have a balanced conversation about um, the value of existing or older methods without being uh, labeled as, as conservative or as obstructionist. So again, it, it's about how do we create the spaces where um, you know, all of these good faith questions can be, can be sincerely explored um, before they're judged. Uh, another education one, just how do we prepare youth for a very precarious future. In a lot of the work that I do, sort of painting uh, the outlook for mega trends, I talk about the, uh, the um, transformational changes underway, which are the changes that we do intend, and the disorderly transitions, which are the changes that we do not. And when you look at them all, it, it does really feel like a kind of like a, a race against time. Um, you know, which the transformational changes are often trying to reduce stresses in society and the disorderly transitions are often trying to, um, to increase the stresses in society. So, you know, will we relieve the stresses before they break us? And, you know, how well does the education system prepare us for the range of futures that, uh, that are all, all, all plausible? Interesting in government, and this is something that I'm now working in uh, actively myself, how do we get more responsive to reality? Um, so much of public service delivery uh, happens within a kind of uh, managerial fantasy land, as I call it, where we set metrics, we set KPIs, as we say, and um, if we hit those targets, then we pretend that we've created the real change that we want in the real world. Um, Sometimes the exact opposite is true, that being blindly focused on the metrics means that we are actively making the thing we want to fix worse in the real world. So how do we bridge that gap between the managerial fantasy land and the real world um, is a difficult challenge for many organizations and particularly uh, for government, where you know, the very legitimacy of our, of our model uh, can be at stake if people feel like uh, public services do not serve them. A retired person who brought the question around, is society tapping into um, what elders can contribute? It's a fabulous question. And it relates to an earlier question about this bias that we have for the new and the difficulty that we have of, of understanding the value of what has come before, of what is old. There's a there's a very linear sense of time in modern society that tends to discount um, our knowledge as we grow older. How do we get a little more nonlinear <laughs> in our thinking about time? You know, here's a fascinating one in the telecom sector now, in, in you know, these big public utilities that provide the infrastructure for these things. Um, the downsides of everyone being connected is something that the business cases, the investment plans in all of the telecoms all around the world never really grapple with. Um, you know, we talk about social media companies and that they need to grapple with those questions now. Um, you know, that's a conversation that has begun in society. But uh, telecom provides the infrastructure that makes that possible. Um, why aren't we talking to them? Why aren't we asking them about what they're doing to think about the risks that they create um, by connecting everyone up without setting some kind of safeguards in place. Fascinating question. I don't think that society is there yet, is asking that question. Um, but maybe in five years time, we'll all be talking about it. 
journalism, how do we deal with those who despise us? You know, it, it's a, another version of the, the PR question about, um, about is impartiality dead? So, okay, it's hard to be impartial. It's hard to be objective. So you're trying to find an appropriate stance to play a useful role, holding power to account, informing society about things that are useful to know. And now while you're doing that mission, you have to be thinking about the, about the emotions, um, about the tribes and the tribalism in society uh, that may be hostile to the work you're trying to do. Even if you're trying not to promote one interest or another, impartiality is gone. And so you are. How do you protect yourselves against those whose interests that you damage while you're trying to do good work in society? And what I take away as, as I just wrap my head around these, these, these paradigm challenging questions that are being asked across society is, is, a, is a quite optimistic um, feeling about how much cognitive work um, we are doing right now to really try to understand um, what is holding us back conceptually so that we can see the new ways forward.